Right, so you said you wanted to come to France, right? <laughs> you want to spend your money here, right? Oh, you want to put all your money in a French bank? You want to give people your money? Oh, they don't want it. It's fine. Keep it, keep it. Before I even get into this one, I just want to say, why is it that the things that you actually need to survive are the hardest things to come by? You need shelter. <clears throat> Do I need to point up to a card up here to click my other video about finding an apartment in Paris? It didn't need to be that hard. It didn't need to be that hard. And then we have making and spending money. Why is it so damn hard to get people to take my money? Maybe you remember that episode of Spongebob where he had all this money and he didn't know what to do with it, so he just started burying it. He started burning it, and then he started giving it away. At first we didn't know what to do with all the money. We tried burying it, shredding it, and burning it. <laughs> But in the end, we decided to just give it all away. Come again, sir. I'm getting back in line. Now let me explain to you how this works for an American abroad, because I don't know how it works for everyone else, but I'll explain to you how this works. The United States, I believe, is one of the only countries that still needs to know everything about you if you're not living in the United States. So, okay, I'm an American, I leave America. America still needs to know every action that I do. They need to know every bank account that I open. They need to know everything because they think that I'm hiding money from the United States. That's not the case, I just want to live around the world. The United States requires that you fill out all this paperwork at foreign banks, showing, proving that you will tell them how much money you have in your foreign bank account. All money that you make outside of the United States has to be declared on your US taxes, meaning you have to show the United States, even if you're not living in the United States, how much money you're making worldwide. Even if you have no intention of going back to the United States, if you want to maintain your American citizenship, you have to tell them. And I'm sure like some people don't, like I'm sure people forget or they don't know how. I mean, no one knows how. They make this system so complicated so that you don't know how, so that you do do things wrong and then you get fines. <sighs> There's gonna be a lot of this in this video, by the way. It's all to try to avoid billionaires, you know, hiding money offshore, but then it kind of screws all of us over who are trying to expand our horizons and like live an international life and like learn what other countries do better. So maybe we could go back to our country and implement those anyways. So the third part of that is that if you have over $10,000 in your foreign bank account, you have to pay taxes on it. So basically all this to say, if you're an American walking into a French bank with all this baggage, like of course they're gonna be like, <laughs> no, sorry, we don't open bank accounts for Americans because we don't wanna have to deal with your government coming and trying to access all of our French banks to make sure that you are in compliance with all the American laws. Like, I get that. Like, that makes sense. The United States wants to make sure that you're, you know, in compliance with all the laws. That makes sense. That's logical. Okay. France is like, I don't need to deal with all this bullying from the United States government when I'm in France. Like, you're not, you're not the boss of me. So then it leaves people like myself, expats, or people who just want to live international lives. We're like, what do you want me to do here? Finding a bank that'll even open a big account for an American is problem number one. Then once you actually find a bank that wants to open it, Actually opening it <laughs> will never happen. The extremely convoluted, unnecessary process. Okay, you know what, Damon? Calm down. If everyone wants to know, here is my experience. And for all those who are new here, just know that I'm not typically this person and that I do not enjoy doing these long monologues. I would not do this if I didn't have to, but I feel like I'm cornered and I have to do this anyway. Okay, let's get to the video. Your life will be so much easier if you have a close French friend. Now don't freak out if you don't have a close French friend and only took me five years. <laughs> you need someone French or someone already living in Paris to basically write you this document, whether fake or not, saying that you live with them. It's called an attestation d'hébergement. And most times everyone knows this is a fake letter, so I don't know why we need this letter. So anyways, my ex wrote me this letter, and he came with me. We went into three different banks. Again, I didn't care which one, I just needed the bank account open. And you need the bank account open because if you want to, you know, get your gas bill going, they don't accept these cool modern online banks like N26, which by the way I tried and I loved it, but my internet wouldn't take it. My gas wouldn't take it. My rental insurance wouldn't take it. These modern cool online banks often come from like Germany or the Netherlands or the UK. At the beginning of each European bank account, there are these two letters. DE for Deutschland, NL for the Netherlands, UK, GB for Great Britain. None of those will work for like these institutionalized French companies like EDF. If you want to get your gas up and electricity up, water up, if you want to get your rental insurance, they don't accept bank accounts from other countries, which I believe is illegal, but I didn't have it in me to go through a whole process like that. The more I look into N26, I'm like, oh, this is is it gonna work because it's headquartered in Germany and I'm gonna get a German routing number or account number? It's not gonna work. So I'm like, fine, I'll find a French online bank account. Then people will recommend other online banks like Hello Bank, and you're like, okay, these are French modern banks, I'll try those. You go on them and then they say, <laughs> ready? This is just the beginning. You can open these cool modern French banks only if you're coming already from a French bank. Trust me, I tried it, I tried it. Get to step four or five, and you know how they verify these accounts? You have to do a wire transfer of 300 euros from your French bank account. I'm like, 
That's why I'm getting your bank. So I'd had enough, and we walked into three different banks near Plastic Cliché, near my Airbnb, because it was convenient. First thing they'll say is, Vous avez un rendez-vous? They'll give you a rendez-vous. So then you go to your rendez-vous. Okay, je vois bien que vous avez une attestation d'hébergement. Très bien, très bien. Ah! Ah, l'adresse est à l'autre côté de Paris, en fait. Dans un autre arrondissement. Ah, nous, on n'accepte que les, que les attestations d'hébergement dans cet arrondissement-là. From my understanding, I thought you could just roll up into really any bank anywhere in the city. I didn't think it mattered. Look at that, I was a beginner, I was a newbie, so I was like, oh, pardon, um, I'll go to that one then. Don't let them do this to you. They won't allow me to open a bank account on this side of Paris because my address is on the other side of Paris, even though it's the same company. People are just making up rules. Now, if there's one thing that I learned in France, it's that you have to be assertive. Your tone is everything. Your tone needs to be strong, but not too bossy. Strong, but not too condescending. If you walk in, look, like I'm typically a goofy person. I'm in a good mood. I wake up smiling. I'm happy to be alive one more day. And I walk to the bank and I have this attitude, go get them attitude. And they're just like, c'est pas possible, monsieur. Non, ça va pas aller. And you're like, oh, okay, okay, I'll come back another day. <laughs> you will come back every day of your life. Then we leave and I'm like, da, 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 da. let's go call some banks. So we call some banks around his arrondissement. Finally, one was like, hey, do you want to come by this Friday? We can open a bank account for an American. It's Friday, got all my documents. I roll up into the bank again with my ex and the attestation d'hébergement, right? And they go, ah, ah, pardon, monsieur, nous ici, on n'accepte pas les attestations d'hébergement. Okay. But then you try explaining that on the other side of Paris, they accept the attestation d'hébergement, but that they wouldn't accept it because it wasn't in that bank's radius. Bref, when you try to explain that, they say, oh, well, each bank kind of operates separately, even though we do have the same name. Okay. And the man says, sorry, sir, this is one of the only locations in Paris where, uh, we don't accept, um, you know, like a, a friend or a landlord to write you a letter saying you live there. We need a gas bill in your name. One, you could have told me that on the phone. I let a few weeks go by because again, I was like, I'm getting too angry. <laughs> I'm too invested in this. I'm a happy person. And during this time, I get an apartment and I'm like, whoa, I got the apartment. Now I have a lease. This is all they need. They don't even need the attestation d'hébergement. Cool. Now it'll be easy. <laughs> I go around my apartment. I go into three banks and they all say, vous avez un rendez-vous? And I'm like, no. Is there never walking hours here? Walking to the next bank and they're like, we can take you today. And I'm like, what? Okay. And the guy was in his 20s. So I'm like, okay, this guy's totally gonna get me. He's gonna understand that like all these systems put in place are like a little outdated. And this is how my conversation with him went. Okay, je vois bien que vous avez tous les documents. Ah, c'est quoi ça? Ah, contrat d'appartement, votre bail. C'est un bail. And I'm like, yeah, it's my lease. And he's like, ah, pardon, on accepte pas ça. And I'm like, what? My name is literally on this lease. Why won't you accept this? Il faut que vous ayez un, un fiche de, what is it, fiche de tous les mois, like a rental slip. Basically like the piece of paper saying that I paid a month's rent. And I'm like, you don't need this. I have my name on the lease. And he's like, mais par contre, ce qu'on peut faire, c'est une attestation d'hébergement. And I'm like, lucky for you, I have one. I get a phone call. And it's him. And he goes, Est-ce qu'il y a moyen que votre ami peut passer euh, parce que on a besoin de ces documents en fait pour l'attestation d'hébergement? I'm like, You don't need these documents because you and I both know that this is a fake attestation d'hébergement. You won't accept my contrat de mon bail because you need this attestation. This does not make sense. He does not need to come by and it's going to be fine. No, you don't. <laughs> like, you don't need a piece of today, it's fine. You don't need a piece of today. You don't need these documents. He literally has your first of He has this. <laughs> So I walk in and uh, they're like, oh, c'est bien que vous êtes là parce que y a beaucoup de, beaucoup de documents qu'il faut que vous remplissiez. Uh, remplissiez. I go back to his office and he goes Whoosh! and puts down like a stack of papers that have the American IRS, like government papers from the United States. And I'm like, how did you get these? So the paperwork and I'm like, here you go. Um, and he's like, great, everything's good. Uh, we'll be back to you in a few days. At this point, they have my documents. The bank has my documents and they are validating my account. They're processing it to make sure everything is good to open a bank account for an American abroad. A week goes by and I email my dude and I'm like, dude, Please let me know, like, est-ce qu'il y a quelque chose que je peux faire pour vous? J'aimerais bien que mon compte s'ouvre. I would like my account to be open. What can I do to help y'all? No response. I'm like, that's weird. Like, this dude is, this dude is modern and cool. Like, he knows how to use email. 
So I walk in. Guess what? He doesn't work there anymore. He, I don't know if he quit. I don't know if he got fired. My dude doesn't work there anymore. And now I have to re-explain my entire situation one more time. And he goes, Vous inquiétez pas, monsieur. On va vous envoyer votre carte dans les prochains jours. So I wait those prochains jours, and I don't have my card. And so I walk into the bank again, and I say, Hi, excusez-moi. J'ai pas reçu ma carte, et je sais ce qui se passe. Mon carte, ma carte a été envoyée vers cette adresse-là parce que vous m'avez fait écrire que j'habite là-bas, alors que non, parce que vous acceptez pas mon bail qui a mon nom dessus. Vous acceptez pas ça. Vous acceptez que la station d'hébergement chez mon ami, et vous avez envoyé une enveloppe qui a dit Damon Dominique avec cette adresse, alors que mon nom n'est pas sur la boîte aux lettres parce que c'est un I don't live there. So I went on a huge monologue saying how this is ridiculous. <laughs> how I didn't want to live in the 1800s. <laughs> and after my huge monologue, he's like, I agree. And I'm like, you agree, but you're not going to help me. And this is so ridiculous at this point that when I was doing my long monologue to this like sexy French zaddy, you know, I dropped a little, dropped a little like pickup line in there. <laughs> I was like, look, I can't turn on my electricity, my heat, my water until I have this French bank account. So if you don't want me to shower at my own house, then I'm gonna have to come shower at yours. <laughs> Got him. So my card is drifting around Paris somewhere because they don't know where to deliver it because my name is not on the mailbox because I don't live at my ex's house because they, oh my God. At this point, a month had already gone by. So I marched in there and I gave them the freaking piece of paper that they needed that said that I paid one month's rent. And I say, here you go. Can you change the address for me, please? And they're like, sorry, sir, you have to do it online. And I said, I tried that. Your system doesn't work. I got an error saying I need to come into the office. So I did, here I am. And they're like, okay, on va vous faire ça. I'm like, if you could have just done it quickly in 30 seconds, then why would, Why did I need to like do it? Why'd you even, just, why, why? <laughs> I must really be getting in the swing of things here in Paris because I went up into the bank and I said, <clears throat> excuse me, um, can I please change my address? And they said, sir, you have to do it online. And I said, well, <laughs> that's funny because I got an error message. I'm here to do it in person. And they said, sure, no problem. And so they changed it. And that's how things get done. You tell them what, what's gotta be done four times and then they'll do it. And yes, mom will buy an umbrella. It's raining out here. A few days go by and I get the piece of paper in my inbox here at this address. And they're like, come in to pick up your card. I'm like, sounds good. So I walk in. They don't accept my identification, which, okay, I agree. Like you don't, you don't have to accept my California license, but at this point, like I've been in your bank seven times. Like, you know, this face, <laughs> you know that I am this person. So stop being a robot, be a human with thoughts and feelings and recognition software. I need to redo his recognition software. I would like to thank the French bureaucracy system for inspiring me to get my 10,000 steps of the day in. Then as I'm walking out, he goes, Sir, don't forget your ID. And I'm like, and he goes, you'll use it a lot more than I will. And I look back at him in front of everybody and I go, apparently not. <laughs> this country's too much fun. I'm gonna go get my, my credit card. So I walk back in with the passport and he goes, okay, voici la carte. And I look at it and I'm like, Activation code, veuillez attendre le code d'activation qui vous sera livré dans quelques jours. No! You're not, no! <laughs> Just give me the activation code now! You don't need to send it to me again, I am already here with my card. Why do you need to send me another code to then come back in so that you can say that I don't have the right documents again? Donc il faut attendre une autre fois pour que la code ça soit... Ça va assez vite, hein, je vous rassure. C'est vite, ça, ça fait deux mois, là. Non, non, mais pas... Euh... Et c'est pas possible par email, tu dois mon compte, ouais, parce que là, ça arrive Non, pas. parce que, alors, un jour peut-être, pour l'instant, non. Puis là, ça dépend pas de C'est presque 2020. De ah, so finally, I open my little boîte à lettres, and I open it, and there's my activation code, baby, and I go to the ATM, and I forgot my card. I'm like, damn it! No! So I go back home, grab the card, go back to the ATM, and my code works, and everything's good now! <laughs> Did I need to go through all that? No! I didn't, none of that needed to happen. I hassled them, they had to do more work for really no reason. <sighs> I have my Paris apartment, I have my Paris bank account, and now I'm my Paris tranquility for the next three months until March when my visa expires and I see if my talent visa gets renewed. <laughs> it's
it's always something, right? So with all that being said, everybody, please subscribe to this channel because in growing my subscriber base, that will also help my application getting a talent visa here because it'll show the French government that people do enjoy seeing me and my life in Paris. So please share this. Um, I never thought it would be this difficult to give my money to people. <laughs> See you next video. Bisous. Ciao, ciao. Recommendation for everyone coming to Paris, especially Americans, join the American expats in Paris group. We're all having the same issues, right? I think whether you're American or not, maybe not this bank issue. If you are a student coming to France, let me reassure you, when I was here studying abroad, it was the easiest thing. The program that I was studying with had a list of each branch that like had the most lenient rules, I guess. The last thing I'll say is that this whole address thing really makes no sense to me because you need all this paperwork to say that you live somewhere when you're first starting your bank. But in order to just change your address, like, if I want to go in tomorrow and just say like, hey, I moved down the street, all I had to do was tell them the address. So why was the address in the beginning so much more important than this second address? Here was an issue that I ran into when looking for an apartment, for example. I was calling all these agencies, as you saw in that video, and one of the solutions that they offered me was to put all my money, um, all 12 months of rent. So if it's $1,000 a month, I'm putting $12,000 in a third party bank account where if I don't pay my rent each month, they would start taking it from that account. Third party account that I can't touch, like it's an escrow account, I think. And I was like, that sounds great for anyone who's not American, but if I have over $10,000 in a foreign bank account, then I will have to pay taxes on that foreign bank account. So that didn't make sense, you see?